Hi, I'm Sarah Woodbury. I've written over 40 novels inspired by Welsh history and mythology, and I love all things medieval, which is why I'm here today at Tomen Amir. So last week we talked about Robert of Rhythland. How does Tomen Amir fit in with him? Tomen Amir is one of those fantastic sites in North Wales that encompasses essentially the whole of the history we've been talking about in these videos, Robert of Rhythland being one part. It begins with Welsh mythology and the Mabinogion, with the legend of Shu and Lathawedd, which is a tale of treachery and romance, uh, mostly treachery, based at Tomen Amir. Next come the Romans. They built the walls and the barracks and a bath and an amphitheater, which was one of the few amphitheaters that they built for just military purposes. They did that, of course, because it was really remote. Um, and like when we talked about Hadrian's Wall, one of the worst postings in the empire. If it was so remote, why did they build there? Well, the reason for all of that is that 20 years earlier, a Roman legion had been wiped out by the local British tribe, the Ordovices. The Roman response, as it had to be, was more force, and they came in in turn almost wiped out this tribe. Tomen Amir was built at a crossroads to control what remained of that tribe. The Romans left around 140, or at least abandoned Tomen Amir. Within a few hundred years after that, the Welsh fortified it enough to have built earthworks. Um, potentially during the reign of Cunetha. Then come finally the, the Normans in the 1090s and Robert of Rhythlan, who built Mott and Bailey castles all over North Wales, like we talked about last week. If you go there now, you see this Mott rising up in the middle of this Roman ruin. It's about six and a half meters high, 36 meters wide in diameter. And it was built from stone blocks taken from the Roman ruins that were there. Tomen Amir, in fact, means the mount in the walls. They actually didn't control the site for very long either. Uh, as we talked about last week, Robert of Ridlan was killed around 1093, and the Welsh again took this site over. Though it does appear to have gone back and forth a little bit, in that the last mention of Tomen Amir by the Normans is in 1114 when Henry I, in his attempt to take over Northwest Wales, uh, camped here for a night. The Welsh used the site from then on. There is a farmstead that again was built out of the stones of the fort. And when the slate mines were running in North Wales, they ran a rail line right through the center of the amphitheater. To bring it back to the time period we've been talking about, Robert of Ridlan died in 1093 and Griffith Ap Kinnon became King of Gwyneth, and it's him that we're going to talk about next week. If you like this video, click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel. There will be a new video next week. And if you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.